going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a brand new video and the video that we're going to be talking about today, I'm still a little sick, still trying to get over it, but I want to get this video out to you guys, especially with uh, obviously the new update uh, that we keep hearing about and how, you know, how much easier Town Hall 10 is, which is true to a certain extent considering what Supercell did to the Inferno Towers and the Expos and so on. So I thought it'd be interesting to share with you guys this base right here, and I will be taking it off scout mode uh, very, very soon so you guys can see the traps. I'll explain the idea behind the base when I designed it. One thing you have to understand is, or a disclaimer I want to get out there is I am nowhere near like a base building god or anything like that, but I did want to try something different, kind of take the bull by the horns in building a base for this new update. Uh, the first thing that you guys are going to see is the single shot Inferno Towers. It is something that is, I mean, pretty rapidly becoming uh, part of the new meta. It's very, very common now. Uh, so the idea behind a base layout like this is with the air defenses all on one side, uh, it does make it very difficult to lolo first and foremost. The second thing is you can't really bring a kill squad in uh, to take out the Inferno Towers and take out how there's how there's these two expos uh, over here on the left um, and then uh, obviously all the point defenses and the splash defenses on uh, the left side of these two inferno towers you can't send a kill squad in there because the golems and the heroes will get absolutely roasted within just a few seconds under uh, the inferno tower beams so that was one thing uh, in, on this base, uh, uh, again, you are going to see five replays on this base. Um, I did run a Golem in the CC because I didn't know, again, still adjusting to the new meta, I didn't know how many people were going to be trying to use Miners, so I wanted to have a Golem in the CC just to kind of counteract uh, a mass Miner attack if people were going to be using that. Uh, and the other thing is, if you bring something in from the upper right-hand side, like up here, or if you bring something in over here, you can't really get to any of the Inferno Towers. Um, and it still is very difficult to hog. As we know, hogs are very much into the meta. Overnight, they came back into the meta. Uh, but it still makes it very, very difficult. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of scout mode so you guys can see the traps. Obviously, this base is completely burned. Do not copy it. But it's just a blueprint to a base that maybe you want to start looking to design. Uh, so one thing you'll see, a kill squad coming in from the upper right hand side, or the upper left hand side, you won't get an Inferno Tower, you'll get the CC, you'll get the Queen, um, but if you look at all these traps, normally you'll be hogging uh, from this side of the base, uh, but it still makes it very difficult because you might not be able to get all these core defenses, so you might have a nasty hog split, not to mention you have a bomb tower and two giant bombs, even though this Inferno Tower is single shot, you would still need a heal there. Um, and also these Wizard Towers are in fact in range of the, in, of uh, are just in range of this Inferno Tower, as you guys are gonna see on the replays. And the other key ingredient to defending in this meta, more so than ever before, is the spring traps. Having these spring traps in a nice line so you know uh, if the hogs even make it this far, that you will be flinging at least anywhere from two to three hogs per spring trap. And also, you wanna make the pathing difficult. Um, you don't wanna do any Tesla farms, we're not seeing that, that's definitely not meta. Uh, you might see it in the core, but that was kinda of to defend against like a Sui Hero Lalo having core Teslas. But having Teslas kinda of scattered around the base just to kinda of throw off the hog pathing, uh, if they don't save a couple, to take out that defense, you'll have a whole group kind of jump outside the wall to go back in Wizard Tower in range of that Tesla. Gonna be doing work. All right, so that's enough um, analysis of the base. As we watch the attacks, we'll be giving analysis also, but I wanted to get this out to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into the very first replay. All right, guys, here is gonna be the very first, and this was the very first attack um, and all these replays are going to be coming from the war we had against Grumpy Old Men. Huge shout out to them. We got ice cream. I believe this is ice cream for breakfast. Um, he drew the shortest straw. He's going to be hitting this base fresh. Again, they did not have a Town Hall 9 scout. Uh, the idea behind this attack, he is doing a shattered Lalo. Uh, the idea behind this is he figured that uh, with two golems, he could take out the three air defenses. Um, 
and he's going to be able to take out the enemy CC and the enemy Archer Queen and figure that he'd be able to lolo through the rest of the base and uh, you know with 15 loons he would be able to get through the two single shot inferno towers uh, but we'll go ahead and see exactly how he breaks this base down already has one air defense already taken care of has a decent funnel over here at uh, three o'clock uh, a couple of bowlers are going to walk Gollum going in he's going to be taking for the queen and as you guys see he has two air defenses down now um and right here, look at this goal. Look at the work. Even with a giant, a golem, and the bowlers heading into that inferno tower compartment with the bomb tower in there, coupled with the two giant bombs, and that inferno tower is in fact going to stay up completely. Ended up roasting uh, that level five golem just in a matter of seconds. Queen pops her ability, uh, jump wears off. Look at how quick she goes down that inferno tower. Uh, beam was in range over the wall right there and here's the Lalo starting over here at 12 o'clock uh, and right here gonna be hasting these loons into the wizard tower but there was a seeking air mine and the air skellies uh, gonna take care of those loons even though they were under haste and you can already see uh, that he's in a little trouble right now again all the air defenses are down but we still have the two inferno towers still up and we do still have um, some splash and a bunch of point defense still down here at the six o'clock compartment or the six o'clock quadrant of the base. And that is, you can already see that that is going to be a fail. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and check out the next hit and these will be in order. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, here's the next example. We have Trung uh, 1102, huge shout out to him. Uh, he's an absolute 10v10 master of Grumpy Men, did very, very well in Premiere. Uh, now, he, what he's now the goal here is that he wants um, to Sui here Lalo this base. Uh, again, this was the second attack on the base, and you'll see just like you would, you know, pre meta, you know, pre update, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is just a straight up. Um, you know, old fashioned Sui Hero Lalo, uh, where he wanted to take out uh, this six o'clock compartment where he's going to get uh, that Archer Tower, the Wizard Tower, the Expo, and a couple of other defenses just to break the defensive ring and have all of his spells for the Lalo. Uh, and you'll see he did get that Expo with the Queen under ability. Uh, and he is, in fact, going to get that cannon as well. Queen's going to roast as both Inferno Tower beams were locked onto her. So starting off very, very heavy. Notice he dropped down his um, CC Hound first, which is exactly what the Inferno Tower is going to lock onto. Wait till you guys see how fast that Hound pops. There it goes. Again, just a matter of seconds. Um, and you'll see right here, the loons are going to be pathing around this base. Um, Counterclockwise, he dropped down four haste and a rage for the core. Did drop two skelly spells. Did, in fact, get the enemy queen. And you'll see he's just going to be dropping down a few more loons up here at the top side of this base. Um, but you'll see he's already kind of ran out of spells. Had to go very haste heavy as he was fighting a sweeper on the initial deployment. Uh, drops down that heel, but there's uh, no more rages, no more haste left up. And you're going to see uh, this single shot Inferno Tower do absolute work. Seeking Air Mine caught that, caught that one balloon right there. And that Wizard Tower just going to be chewing away at this huge wad of loons. Expo doing work. And with that Inferno Tower in range of all those defenses, uh, definitely something to keep in mind. This is obviously going to be a fail. We had the IT, the Expo, and the Archer Tower still up. So, uh, now we'll go ahead and check out the third defense uh, from this war. All right, guys. So, um, the reasoning that, that I'm thinking how they did this is they decided to hit the base uh, with air the first time, air the second time, couldn't get it. So, they went ahead and switched up uh, the strat to miners. And again, this was the very, very first war in the new meta. Uh, so, people not 100% sure exactly... Um, what attacks were going to be OP. So I'm sure this was maybe kind of a test thing. They did know that there was a Golem in the CC. Obviously, this is the, the third defense uh, that we're going to be showing you guys. So it goes ahead, drops down a few hogs uh, to go ahead and lure out the Golem, where he is going to take care of that with a baby dragon. Um, so just go ahead and speed this up real quick. Uh, drops down Queen. Uh, Poison's going to take care of that enemy Loon. So you'll see right here, Queen and Baby Dragon over at 9 o'clock. They're going to be walking down. King up there at 12 o'clock, funneling everything down. 
and then basically bringing in minors from 12 to 9 through the base. Five heal spells, and uh, he does have one uh, skelly spell donated in uh, the clan castle uh, that he's going to be bringing to this attack. So two heal spells already down. So again, even though you're running a golem CC, you can still be minor, especially if uh, your CC can be lured like mine was. Um, so that's why they figured, hey, maybe we can do miners on this attack. But that Inferno Tower compartment does absolute work. You'll see he did he did lose a bunch of miners. Again, two giant bombs and a bomb tower in there. And these Inferno Towers only have to be locked onto a miner for just a few seconds. So if you have a few defenses um, that can pick off the miners, that be that being the splash and the point, uh, the the, uh, the DPS. And also any uh, storages, you know, any high HP like I have inside my Inferno Tower compartments definitely can slow down something like a minor attack. Uh, but you can see there's still way too much up, uh, even a spring trap uh, catching a couple of those miners. Um, but yeah, those miners petering out, locked on the expo, the wizard tower clearly in range of it. You definitely want your wizard towers, especially defending something like miners, you want those wizard towers in range of uh, a high hit point building like an expo and especially something like a storage where that wizard tower can slowly pick apart uh, something like miners. Now we'll go ahead and check out the fourth defense um, on this base from this war. All right guys, so we did go ahead and see this, you, this right, at, at this point in time, we've already kind of started to see throughout the war where the meta was shifting to. Um, which was hogs. So we saw two air attacks on this base with no success. We saw the minor, the, the, the kind of the mass minor attack uh, with little success. Um, the attacks we were using were hogs. A lot of their triples, remember they had six 10v10s this war. So they picked up very, very quick using hogs. Uh, so that's what they figured they can go ahead and do to this base. So um, Puck is going to be entering over here at nine o'clock. Uh, no wall breakers, just going to jump straight in. He wants to break the defensive ring on this attack, negate some giant bombs, and take out the enemy queen. And you can see that Inferno Tower Beam locked on to his king. Again, gone within just a matter of seconds. Uh, and you can see that the troops are distracted on that golem. That's why something like a golem and a hound is so powerful. Um, uh, probably hoping with, to get that at least one Inferno Tower with his queen. Um, but she went ahead and passed up. So what he had to do is go ahead and just kind of spam his hogs down here um, at the bottom side of the base uh, where he does have three heal spells. So he had a jump and a rage for his kill squad. He's got three heals for the, uh, for the hog uh, portion. And you can see uh, the hogs already kind of split. So right off the bat, you already know he's kind of in trouble. Uh, Giant Bomb taking quite a bit of hit points away from those hogs. Um, but you can see that split right there is what really, um, uh, really got the best of Puck in this attack with that nasty hog split. The way hogs are going to be working in this meta and how they've always worked is you have to clear out that core and have a straight line where those heal spells can be touching all the defenses where your hogs do not split. That's why you want at least a few defenses inside of that core um, in hopes that a kill squad cannot reach it. Uh, but you can see they're definitely staying away uh, from bringing a kill squad in because of the two single shot Inferno Towers side by side. Um, you cannot bring a kill squad into that area. It will completely wreck golems and heroes. So that's the fourth defense. Now we'll go ahead and check out the fifth and final defense from this war. All right, guys, last but not least, we have, who is this? Tuyin Tran um, hitting this base just with, I think it was just a few minutes left in war, trying to, trying to secure another 10v10 as this was a very, very close war uh, at the end. So what he's going to be doing is he's going to be bringing in um, the kill squad straight into the Inferno Towers and we'll go ahead and see um, what happens to his kill squad when you bring a kill, when you bring a kill squad uh, into Inferno Towers, especially side by side like this. Uh, he is uh, bringing quite a few bowlers and does he have, I do not remember if he has CC, okay, uh, he has camp bowlers down, okay, there goes the CC bowlers uh, jumping straight in no wall breakers um uh so he's just going to be bringing 22 hogs 
through uh, this base. So here you can see his kill squad has already done quite a bit of work. Going to have some, he is going to, uh, some queen on queen action. He is going to take care of the enemy queen. And he does still have ability uh, where he's going to get that expo, where he's going to get uh, that wizard tower. We're going to start trickling hogs in over here at nine o'clock. Goes ahead and pops queen ability. Uh, but you can see he is not going to get that second inferno tower. Uh, and as you can see, this was a shattered entry. And again, those golems and that king just getting roasted by the single shot ITs. Okay, so he does still have two heal spells to deploy, uh, but you can see he does have a nice defensive ring. I'm going to go ahead and pause it real quick, uh, but as you guys can see, there are still three layers of defenses, uh, which is pretty much what you want to avoid. Another thing is splitting up the heroes. If you're going to be bringing a kill squad in hopes to get those two single shot inferno uh, towers, um, you want to have your king on the opposite side of the base like I have because there is no way a kill squad can take out both those single shot inferno towers based on um, the wall segments and all the compartments. There's no way they can take out the enemy king. And as you can see, he's all out of spells, still has the bomb tower and two giant bombs. You got the ground skellies and king just doing absolute work on those hogs. And you can see my king is going to pretty much bitch slap his right there and pretty much ended it. But that's going to do it right there, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, as a disclaimer, I'm nowhere near anything like, you know, a, a base building God or a self-proclaimed base building God. Uh, but I did switch up a base that I have been running, um, splitting up the heroes, putting those, uh, those Inferno Towers onto single shot putting some bombs in there and making it very difficult for a kill squad to take out both ITs and making it very difficult for a kill squad to get deep enough into the base to eliminate all the defenses as you guys saw in a couple of those hog attacks and the minor attacks where you see the troops splitting um, which can be very, very devastating in this meta. You need those hogs to stay in a very, very tight group where you can heal them throughout and you don't get anything uh, like nasty splits. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully it helps you guys in your base building and trying to defend uh, how overpowering Town Hall 10 can be. Um, you know, especially with, uh, you know, good execution. You still need good execution and you still need to take out uh, key objectives uh, like Inferno Towers, the enemy Clan Castle troops, the enemy Archer Queen, and break that defensive ring. Uh, but as you guys can see, you can still defend in this meta. This was only the first war that we had uh, where we had a little bit of time to switch up the bases. But again, hopefully it helps you guys. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys um, like it. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. And of course, and again, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.